On this episode... Stick it down as deep as you can go, Mark. The family that fishes together also does this together. Dustin, hang on to the net till it gets straight, son. I'm That's putting it next to it, little boy. Hurry up and come help Mama do the girls' job. And now it's my turn to feel the love of the Wadley clan. Come on, come on. I, I can't stand on the bottom. This is in, in that rope. They ain't ready. Orlando, Florida is known as the theme park capital of the world, with attractions like Disney World and Universal Studios drawing upwards of 60 million visitors every year. You will not find me among them. But you might find me from time to time on the outskirts of the happiest place on Earth. Just past the city limits, there's a different kind of attraction that you don't have to stand in line for. Out here, the wilderness is still wild. The animals are free to roam and roost wherever they please. And the land is sparsely populated with a hardy people who scratch out their existence the old-fashioned way. People like the Wadley family. They've been fishing these waters for generations, long before there was a magic kingdom, using a method of fishing that's thousands of years old and allows them to pull in anywhere from five to 20,000 pounds of fish every working day. All right, I'll tell you what I know. We're late, it's early. Um, we're going out on a swamp, which will eventually get us out into a river, and then we're going fishing. That's what I know. Well, I was wrong before we even started. We will not be hitting any rivers today, but we will be fishing. Whether that translates into catching is anybody's guess. So the sun's up, that means we're late, right? That yeah. means the sun's blistering us on the butt before we get out on the water. <laughs> so let's start from the very beginning. This is Junior, you're Taryn. Where am I exactly? Lake Hancock, the source of Peace River. Taryn and Junior are the matriarch and patriarch of the Wadley clan. Their family's been fishing these waters since the 1800s, and it seems they may have picked up some, let's call them idiosyncrasies. Mike, you're probably gonna hear things out of my boys you probably ain't never heard. I've already heard some things I've never heard, Junior. No, you, like if you hear Dustin, he'll be saying something like, art thou? He's just saying in a weird way you got a lot of fish. What kind of fish are we talking about? Tilapia. That's our specialty. Uh, Y'all gonna have to be careful where you're at here in just a minute because I gotta come up there with that sledgehammer. I gotta beat that pole down. You guys got that? Junior is coming in your direction with a sledgehammer to beat the pole down. <laughs> to not move could result in some kind of tragedy. If you were expecting a fishing pole, adjust your expectations. This is the only pole the Wadleys use. All right, so if I'm putting this together right, we're probably gonna go over here and hammer in another one of those. No. 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 Yeah. As you can see, the Wadleys are pretty much on automatic pilot. Most of them were born net fishing or seine fishing. It's a pretty simple process, really. Massive drag nets are laid vertically in the water, and their bottom edge is held down by weights in order to ensnare and then scoop up vast amounts of fish in one fell swoop. It used to be a lot more work, Mike. He's finally learned how to do it so well, he's looked at my big fat butt and lays it out just like it. <laughs> Are you getting in the water today, Mike? I'm gonna do whatever you tell me to do. You're the boss of me today, you yeah. know what I am? I'm cheap labor, I'm 200 pounds of compliant, willing flesh. Yeah, I did think you was gonna be a little bitty short feller, to be honest did with you, for really some reason, yes. <laughs> Mike, are you going into the net boat? I'm gonna do whatever you tell me to do, Junior. Go into the net boat. Well, whatever Taryn tells me to do. Again, it's pretty basic stuff. We've got about 3,000 feet of net in the boat. We attach the net to the pole to anchor it. Then we stretch it out in a way that more or less reflects the basic dimensions of Taryn's butt. Dustin, hang on to the net till it gets straight, son. Go on, fat boy. Did you call him fat boy? Fat boy, that's his nickname out here. Fat Nancy. <laughs> fat Nancy. God, dog. Art thou. Art thou. Art thou. Art thou is a fishing term that means, honestly, I don't know what it means. I just think it's something Dustin likes to say. He laid out the whole net? Yes, he is. You don't need to. That's what I told her, but she wants it, so she's getting it. Lord have mercy. <laughs> 
Well, obviously, the more net you put out, the more fish yeah, you bring in. Yes, sir. But this one right here, though, it brings in a little too much. All right, fat boy, you got five quarts left. Why am I wearing socks? So he's gonna drag that all the way back around to where you first put it in. So you basically just made a big circle. A C, as of right now. A C. So the fish can get out any time right now. You see where that other boat's anchored? Yeah. Right there, that's the pole. That's our destination to pull this all the way into a circle. You got that? Nope, I didn't get it either. And if I didn't know better, I think maybe I'm starting to get in the way. Where are you gonna want me? What, well, whatever you want to do. Do you want to be in the water? Do you want to be in the boat? It's up to you. Well, let's say you were sitting at home watching the show and you wanted to get a sense of really where the action was, what was going on. You want to be in the water? Mike, I don't know that if you got told, but it's going to be a muddy situation in your underwear. Oh, yeah. See what I mean? You almost never hear that at Disney World. Now, Mike, if you see that right there today when you're in the water, all these bubbles. if you see something like that, it is an alligator. So, Tell me what's going on, Taryn, because for the life of me, I can't figure out what's going on. If the cork at. line goes underneath this cork line, it's going to lift up my lead line, and he's going slow as a turtle right now. So I go faster now. As Doodle increases his speed. Get it, get it, get it. Well, hang on. Ah! Mama offers gentle encouragement. Now, is that the. Uh, this is the that's decoy, the decoy net. net. That's the decoy, right. Yeah. And for reasons still best defined as mysterious, Doodle. the decoy nets need to be vigorously tugged, pulled, and or yanked. Hurry up and come help Mama do the girl's job. Mama, I got this donkey. Pick it up, boy. You should have done did it. Come on, Mama get it. Mama panicking. No, because y'all running over the wing net. Let it touch. To it. Let it touch. Fair amount of pandemonium going on right now. Difficult to really know exactly what's happening. Doodle's doing his work with, with the shovel. Mama just got in the water. Doug's trying to figure out what to shoot. Part of my crew's over there, part of it's over here. Dustin, don't let my cord go underneath my cord. I got I it. I want to help you a little bit over there, Mike. I'd, I'd be happy to. Anything I can do to help you there, Dustin? Yes, sir. You just pull this yeah. cord line. You want to keep them just barely away from me, all right? Yep, as they see, I'm out there getting close. Keep uh -huh. pulling. All right, that's good, Mike. Now just hold it still. Out here, yeah. the fish are getting on this net. This net's just making them go back in a circle in the net. The fish are all on this inside of the net. You're in a big, giant circle right now. When you get to this point right here, right. all your fish in the net are trying to flood out. They start realizing, oh no, we're getting caught. Right. When you lay this out, they go, oh. They swim around the net and they think they're free. You really think they think? Uh, I don't know, they're pretty smart. <laughs> All right, get, get in the water. If there's one thing I've learned today, slide on in the water. What side? What it's mama right. wants, mama gets. A little bit. A little deeper than I thought. Yeah. So I'm in Polk County, Florida, Lake Hancock to be precise, which is about an hour southwest of Orlando as the crow flies. I'm hanging out with the Wadleys, who make their living net fishing for tilapia. Pick it up, boy, you should have done did it. I have many questions about their chosen vocation, and as soon as I decipher whatever language they use down here, I suspect I'll get some answers. I'm fishing to get you, but hold my nose. I don't know why you're at my rear end. My nose is gonna blow around and get on the back of the net. Your nose is gonna blow around. Jump on this side, jump on this side. Yep, you gotta get on that side and you gotta get ready to push that net. I'm about to boat this up. From what I can tell, the second pole allows us to close the net off without letting any fish escape. And my sophisticated underwater state-of-the-art microphone will now allow me to confirm all that with Taryn. Like the net's basically doing this right now, right? Slow, slow, slow. When when do you know you're done? Whenever the last cork comes through. The last cork is through, okay. Yeah. So in real time, how long will it take at this speed to get this net cinched up? Every six inches, it takes one second. This is a thousand yard net. It's gonna take a good hour and a half. Thanks, you just saved me a lot of math. <laughs> Whatever it is you do for a living, there is always a right way to do it. And the right way is always harder than the wrong way. So put your butt this way. My butt's this way. Wrap your leg, your knee around that way. So my, my, my right foot should be what? Your foot should just barely be underneath the net. My foot is underneath the net. Yeah, yep. touching it. It is, right now it's, it's going okay. over the arch of my... Then your left leg should be over here. But when I wrap my leg around that thing, I like my, my foot's in the net. Duh. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
What was that? When you're in murky lake water, anything that brushes your leg is a potential swamp beast from the depths of hell. It was a stick alligator. <laughs> or a stick. If it's an alligator mouth, it'll make a very distinctive beat. Logs don't move in this. You'll be touching to see if that an alligator or a log. I'm not Don't sure it's an alligator or a log. You have to stop the log. <laughs> the log will tear a hole in the net, so you do have to touch it. It ain't asking. It's going to be hard to do it from the boat. <laughs> where I'm going to be in about half a second. <laughs> Mama, we ain't pulling this granny speed all day either. You ain't going to tell me what speed to pull, little boy. Ask me how many they caught yesterday, How many did you catch yesterday? It was a sucky day yesterday. <laughs> It was windy. No. <laughs> Don't be scared of the fish. Put your leg there. Don't let them go through the poles. That's what your job is, is to be a bodyguard. All right. So I'm basically the guardian at the gate, standing watch over the one remaining opening through which the fish can escape. My job is not to let them. Easier said than done. The wooden guy? Yeah. yeah. Straight up, straight up, straight up. My strategy now is to pretend to know what I'm doing. It's on the thing. Get it off. And not contribute to the shouting, scrabbling, and frantic chaos that surrounds me. I'm putting it next to it, little boy. Come on, Tabby, get it. Get it, get it, get it. It came a foot and a half away. Give me in that rope. He ain't ready. All right, Mike, come on. We're going to feed this pole through yeah, here. I'm going to help you right. pull through where? Get that wood one between them two poles. Hear me now. now pick up on it. Pick up on it. No, pick up on the wood pole. Hold pick up on the wood pole. Oh, oh, I got this, Mike. You, you got, got it. Go right got it. Right. I got my sock on the wrong foot. Come here, Mike. Hold these poles together. Oh, goodness. Here it comes. Around there. Get ready to start blocking them, Mike. Don't let them come through. All right, all right. You feel I'm going through my poles? Yes. That means you're getting an F, Mike. An F, is that good? No. <laughs> you want an A? No. Oh. <laughs> no, Push this pole in front of it. That ain't good. Keep it together. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right, cut, cut, him, cut him off. Me. Keep him closed, Mike. Now, Mike, put yeah. your arm all the way across here by me and pick up on both. Got to pull the slack through. Give me this you hand. Show yeah. him how to pull it all the way up. Pull it up. Oh, no, no, the neck. The neck. Oh, keep the neck. pulling. Keep Both pulling. Side. You get that lead line up. Just keep pulling up. Come on, keep going. Come on. I, I can't stand on the bottom. bottom. Feel the bottom. This is the end of the bottom. Yep. Now we got the fish. Now you got the fish. I got it. Now you come around the pocket, Mike. <laughs> now, you, now you get to come around and fill them. Come on. Through divine intervention, serendipity, or just blind luck, we've managed to close a massive net around a mess of fish. Now we need to gather the boats and uproot the poles we planted earlier. We can't just pull that out of there? Go ahead and try it, Mike. My goal today, if I have one, is to do something, anything, that wins Taryn's approval. Keep going, keep going. Here, you want me to put a girl's touch to it? So far, no good. Grab a hold, Mike. Maybe this will be my chance. Mike, I just want you to know that I've gotten that pole up by myself. Maybe it won't. Now that the poles are up, we gather the top opening of the net together like the drawstrings of a purse, which is another name for the type of seine fishing practiced by the Wadleys. Basically, we've turned the net into a giant scoop. As we draw the fish to the top, we can just reach in and haul them out into the boat with hand nets. This is the fun part now. Stick it down there, Mike, and try to fill it up as full as you can. Bring it back to me now. Stick it down as deep as you can go, Mike. Bring it back to me now. Bring oh, it go ahead and get over there to Grace. Oh, he's got a dinky dip. Bring Bring all them baby dippers. Yep. Like you want to catch the fish, Mike. <laughs> I got you. Stick it on down there, fill it up. All right. No baby dip. Yeah. Only the Wadleys could characterize a perfectly respectable and decidedly manly scoop as a baby dip. I know grown men who haven't caught this many fish in their entire lives, but whatever. Let's see if we can't dig a little deeper and capture the majesty of scooping up a bunch of fish from one net into another net, and then dumping them into a boat with the aid of some high-speed slow-motion photography and inspirational music. Fish in the boot. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's no need to do that again. <laughs> 
Seine fishing dates all the way back to the Stone Age, back when ancient Maori fishermen used nets of over a thousand meters in length, requiring hundreds of men to deploy. Well, the Wadley family employed this ancient practice all by themselves right here in central Florida. But you gotta wonder if their lifestyle and the tilapia they harvest are sustainable. Well, what I don't get is, like you're not depleting them at all. No, no, no. As it turns out, not even close. The Wadleys pull somewhere from five to 20,000 pounds of fish into their boats every day. That's over a million pounds of fish annually, and they're still not even making a dent. See, we've been trying to wipe them out for the last however many years my family started fishing. It's like a century you guys have been at it. Uh, yeah. Somebody explain this to me, but not everybody wants. Well, why do they have farms, tilapia farms and all that stuff? That's a good question. There's more fish in the lakes in the state of Florida when it comes to tilapia than all your farm raised that brings into the U.S. It's one thing to hear it. It's another thing to see it. Oh, yeah, he got a good one this time. Yeah, you look like you've done this before. I mean, mathematically speaking, this is, this is just a lot of fish. That dug off fins will get you, won't they? Yeah, they'll get you. Yeah? I got him another fish in the boot. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Alligator gar. Yep. Where do you want this thing? To the boat? Oh, no. The alligator gar is popular with local sports fishermen. It's also native to these waters, neither of which can be said about our catch. A tilapia is a non-native fish to the state of Florida. But they're taking over the waters. There's so many of them now. Whenever the non-natives increase, the game fish decrease. There's a war going on underneath the water people don't know about, and it's between the fish. The game fish and all your native fish, they're not even in the competition anymore. They're getting beat out right now. That's what happens when a pleco outnumbers the catfish. They beat them up, and they take all their food and starve them to death. He's being outsourced and out-inhabited by the other fish. It's pretty clear the native catfish are losing the battle in these waters due to overpopulation of non-native fish like the tilapia. There's also the pleco, a non-indigenous aquarium fish that was unwisely introduced by humans to these waters and are now trashing the local ecology. These right here are plecos. They are right? They're taking over the water. Plecos? Oh, the algae eater. Not one way to go. And just like that, one more pleco goes from home wrecker to food source. In terms of making a living, you guys doing all right? Is the yeah. market more robust? It's just a lot of competition, and a lot of people up north don't even believe there's such thing as a wild flock. Yeah. I mean, we've contacted them, there's no such thing. You know, <laughs> okay. Young man's game. Yeah, it is a young man's game, but we're out here all day and all night hauling. Where'd you start? I've been men in Milwaukee with me for a thing out there. 24 years. I don't even married. 20, I don't want to get in trouble. 20-something. <laughs> How long have you been married? 21 years, and been together, 25. You better be good over there, Junior Wadley. <laughs> you just you just watch your boys do whatever they're doing. Yeah. So what's the goal? I mean, what do you what do you hope to do? What, what I'm trying to do is trying to convince people that we're not out here robbing the lakes. We're not out here taking all the game fish. We're trying to do a good thing because by removing these fish, it also improves the water quality. Yeah. Because there's so many fish in the lake, the actual bottom is nothing but fish. I mean, it's layer, layered with it. And there used to be no game fish in this lake. None. You couldn't find one nowhere. It's, it's, it's starting to do a little bit better, but it got rough for a while. It's a lot of fish, and they're still, they're still here. You can't get rid of them. You're never going to catch them all. We've been trying, believe me. And with the nets empty and our shins properly bruised, it's time to get the catch of the day home. So we go from here back to... I'm going from here to the boat landing and I'm going straight to the fish market. She's taking orders for the, the catch of the day. Yeah. 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 Our, fish, our fish are fresh, Mike, did you see? <laughs> when they go to the market, they still flock them like this. Yeah. It's already been a long day, but it's far from over. The Wadleys ply these waters to supply the local economy, as well as the nation, with that just caught freshness. Their catch today will find its way onto tables and into supermarkets across the country, all while doing Mother Nature a big favor. It's a traditional occupation that goes all the way back to the Old Testament, and it's all in the family, as it were. Brother's been on television before. 
on the world's dumbest criminals. <laughs> wow. He shot a deer out of season, yeah. and it was mechanical, and it kept wiggling its ears. <laughs> So he went right up to it with the game board's off, sitting right there watching him the whole time, trying to kill a mechanical deer. And his best friend in Georgia was watching it and called my mom and dad and said, we just saw your son on television. You're famous. Yes. Congratulations. You've been down here your whole life, yeah. your whole family, like for a century. Fishing these waters, local waters? Yes, yes. Are you loving what you're doing? I love it. In our, it's in the blood, it really is. I used to think anybody could do it if I could do it, but it is in the blood. Well, let me tell you something. You, <laughs> you, you have a unique set of skills. <laughs> what do you think the future is going to be for your you know, family 40, 50, 60 years from now? My goal is to try to get the state of Florida to target the commercial fishing industry to help improve jobs, independent jobs, not jobs that you get paid by the hour, but jobs that you can just go out whenever you get ready, catch fish, sell fish, I mean, this, this right here creates an, a number of jobs right here, and we try our best. When it comes to fishing these waters, there's no doubt the Wadleys have the family history and knowledge. If anyone is going to affect real change in this lake, they are the somebodies who've got to do it. The Wadleys lifestyle is unique. Oh, and maybe not for everyone. Get All right, get, get in the water. You see that right there today? It is an alligator. But it's hard not to appreciate what they do day in and day out. They're fueling their local economy and saving their local ecology all at once. But make no mistake, they work for it. So it's work, right? You know, I mean, they all day long getting the fish out of the Lake Hancock, and then they put it in the boat, and the ice goes in the boat, and the fish go underneath the ice, and then they take the shovels, and they take the fish and the ice out of the boat, and then it goes into these containers here, and then from these containers, we go inside the manufacturing facility. This is the manufacturing facility, or the process. What, what do you call this place, Rich? The market. It's the market, all right. So we're going to the market, much cooler, but work everywhere you look. All the fish, after they get gutted, get put in these containers, and they get shipped all over the country. More work in here. Look, look who it is. Did you miss me? Oh yeah, are you ready to do, do the real work yet, Mike? Well, I don't know about the real work, but I do want to get an idea of what you're doing here. You're I'm tearing it. this fish's head off because it didn't come off when I wanted it to. Sorry. <laughs> you better look out, Mike. You are in the sling zone. Right? It never stops. Over here, I believe, is actually where the uh, transaction unfolds, if you're local. You can walk right in, you can buy yourself some fish that were swimming around an hour ago. It really is about as fresh as it gets. Out here is ultimately a good place to end everything, I suppose. Well, here they are. This is Thomas Fish Company. You find yourself 40 minutes outside of Ocala. Have a hankering for some tilapia. Might as well get it fresh. I mean, why wouldn't you? Say hi to Taryn and Fat Nancy and Rich and Heath and uh, who is that other fella? Say hi to Taryn and Doodle, Rich, the Heathers, Heath. It's hard work. You find yourself in the area, go buy some. They'd appreciate it. Oh, weird day.